I'm dedicated to both digitally and analogously enhancing human color vision, continuously innovating and creating technologies that expand our ability to see colors. One of my latest creations is a pair of special glasses designed to functionally approximate the experience of yellow tetrachromacy for humans. Tetrachromacy represents an expansion of color vision, contrasting with color vision deficiencies. It involves having an additional functional color receptor or a fourth cone type specifically sensitive to yellowish light in this context. This additional cone allows for a significant increase in the complexity and dimensionality of color perception. Essentially, it introduces a new color dimension previously inaccessible, enabling the perception of colors in a way that's beyond our current comprehension. The introduction of a new virtual cone type for yellowish light doesn't just add another color. It exponentially expands the range of distinguishable hues and overall colors. This expansion transforms the traditional two-dimensional hue triangle used to represent color vision into a three-dimensional model. As a result, we can distinguish an incredible array of new hues, leading to a vast enhancement in the spectrum of perceivable colors. This breakthrough in color vision technology opens up new possibilities for experiencing and understanding the world of color. To fully appreciate the innovative technology behind the following yellow tetrachromacy glasses and how they enable us to perceive new and distinct colors, it's essential to begin with an understanding of the human visual system. At the core of our ability to see colors are the cone cells in our eyes. Humans typically have three types of cone cells, each sensitive to different wavelengths of light, long, L, medium, M, and short, S. These cones are most responsive to lime, green, and blue light, respectively. This makes most humans trichromats. However, contrary but still consistent with what I've just said, humans are actually hexachromats. And I can easily prove that. Humans possess a unique aspect of color vision that is technically, and in the right context, effectively hexachromatic. This concept hinges on the inherent binocular redundancy of our color vision system. Both eyes independently perceive colors in the same way, meaning that our color perception remains consistent even if one eye is closed. Each eye functions as a distinct visual organ, with their individual perspectives merging only when processed by the brain. This characteristic of human vision opens up intriguing possibilities for manipulating color perception. By presenting the same object to each eye in different colors, we can create visual experiences of colors that don't naturally occur within our typical color vision range. These are referred to as impossible colors because they lie outside the realm of what we can perceive under normal circumstances. As a consequence, humans are actually hexachromats due to having six types of cone cells across both eyes three in each eye that are just very similar to each other. This unique configuration allows us to perceive not just a single hue of a color, but also impossible combinations of similar or distinct hues within the same or a normally impossible color category. For example, we can perceive variations of red beyond a singular shade, including impossible combinations of reds with other reds, reds with blacks or whites or even a mix of red and green that doesn't default into yellow. By breaking this binocular redundancy in our color vision, we are able to access six distinct dimensions of color, effectively expanding our color perception to include six primary colors. This potential for human hexachromacy will be the topic of one of my future videos. Today, however, we are going to explore how to achieve a very close to functional form of yellow tetrachromacy with this concept. The magic of the yellow tetrachromacy glasses lies in their ability to manipulate the light that reaches each type of cone, thereby altering our perception of color. Each cone type's response to various wavelengths of light is translated into what we perceive as color. The perception of color is about the relative stimulation of all three types. The brain interprets the combined signals from these cones to produce the millions of colors we see. 
For example, when we look at an object that we perceive as green, it's not solely due to the activation of the M cones. Instead, it's because this green object reflects light that stimulates the M cones more than the L and S cones. But those two cone types, activation or inactivation, still influence how we perceive the color green. The balance among the three types of cones and the brain's interpretation of their signals is what allows us to see a wide range of colors. The yellow tetrachromacy glasses take advantage of this complex interplay. By only allowing yellowish light to pass through, they create a new virtual yellow cone type in one eye. All the normal trichromatic colors of the unaltered eye can now be compared against this new pure yellow signal. The result is a perceptual shift in color experience, allowing us to differentiate colors in a way that was not possible before. To enable the perception of a true yellow-only color dimension, it's essential to understand the limitations of typical yellow-tinted filters. Most of these filters, rather than isolating yellow, actually allow red, green and yellow light to pass through by blocking only blue light. This means they don't offer a pure yellow experience because they don't filter out red and green light, which are also components of what we, as normal trichromats, perceive as yellow. Achieving a true yellow-only filter requires a precise approach that excludes red and green light also. This is theoretically feasible since our L and M cone cells can also detect a lot of yellowish light. However, without a dedicated yellow cone, distinguishing pure yellow from a mix of red and green is impossible. To simulate an additional cone type for primarily yellow, inducing a kind of artificial tetrachromacy, one eye must remain unaided to serve as a reference point for comparing the new yellowish color dimension achieved by the other eye. This is achieved through the use of specialized color filters, including a combination of color and multi-bandpass filters. These filters are designed to selectively absorb or reflect all wavelengths, except those that are yellowish, isolating yellow light and effectively creating a virtual fourth cone experience in one of the eyes. This setup introduces a novel primary color, perceptually closest but not identical to a yellowish white, that's unique from any other color due to its purity. The final step in harnessing this enhanced color vision is practice and observation. By attentively observing how colors change and rigorously practicing, one can improve their ability to perceive and understand this new color dimension. The effectiveness of this enhanced color vision is directly proportional to the effort invested in understanding and adapting to it. This artificial tetrachromacy, unlike its natural counterpart that effortlessly produces unique and distinct tetrachromatic colors, operates by introducing us to impossible colors. These colors are less immediately noticeable and may not stand out unless you know specifically what to look for, but they are indeed tetrachromatic. This difference highlights the distinction between experiencing colors through innate biological enhancements and through engineered solutions that expand our color perception in unconventional ways. The tetrachromatic yellow appears almost whitish, not because the color itself has changed, but due to the context in which it is perceived. In isolation, without other colors for comparison, yellow blends indistinguishably with white. This paradoxical situation creates a scenario where yellow is both prominently visible to the altered eye and yet indiscernible from white. As a consequence, the other non-yellow colors such as red, green and blue are perceived as black in this yellow-only vision, rendering the color experience of the altered eye akin to viewing in black and white. It's only by comparing the input from both eyes, the altered and the unaltered, that one can discern that the predominant color seen by the altered eye is indeed still yellowish. With the introduction of a new yellow dimension through this altered vision, our perception of color undergoes a fascinating transformation. Colors as we know them are either impossibly combined with a yellowish white or a non-yellow black hue or manifest in a blend of these two unique shades. This alteration leads to the emergence of impossible colors. 
hues that don't exist within our normal color perception. In this new context, colors devoid of tetrachromatic yellow contrast sharply against a black background, making them appear unusually luminous. These are self-luminous impossible colors. This effect also applies in reverse for colors mixed with the new tetrachromatic yellowish white, enhancing their luminosity. As a result, we gain access to impossible color combinations that are still inside, yet metaphorically beyond our visual spectrum, such as a rare yellowish blue or a more common yellowish cyan. This shift in perception redefines our understanding of white light. In traditional trichromatic vision, white light is a blend of red, green and blue, the neutral point of this threefold color system. However, with the addition of yellow, a new true white emerges, incorporating red, yellow, green and blue. A white light lacking yellow becomes noticeably distinct, establishing a tetrachromatic white that includes yellow as the new fourfold neutral point and setting RGB white as the complementary color to the new tetrachromatic yellow. Moreover, this enhanced color vision introduces new contrasts and combinations that were previously impossible, such as yellow versus red, green or blue, and any other normal color for that matter. It also redefines existing contrasts, such as the familiar blue-yellow contrast, which in reality is more of a red-green versus blue contrast in standard vision. Now, a true yellow-blue contrast is perceivable, distinct from the red-green versus blue contrast. In both real and artificial tetrachromacy, most colors don't reside at the extremes of the color space, instead they are found in more nuanced positions within it. Achieving a pure color signal becomes more complex with an increased number of cone types. For instance, individuals with a red-green color vision deficiency, like deuteranopia, can easily perceive pure blue, as this simply requires turning off red cone activation and relying on blue cones. However, achieving such clarity in yellow tetrachromacy is more challenging, necessitating the deactivation of both yellow and green cones in addition to red, which is a significantly more complex process. Moreover, certain colors are inherently rare in nature and similarly rare in tetrachromacy. These unique hues result from combinations of cone activations that don't typically occur naturally, often omitting one or more cone types, which lie in between two distinct cone types. While trichromatic vision recognizes magenta as the only notable example of such non-spectral colors, colors without a single wavelength representation, excluding white of course, Tetrachromacy introduces an expanded range of these rare colors, including combinations like RG, red-green, RB, red-blue, YB, yellow-blue, RYB, red-yellow-blue, and RGB, red-green-blue. Conveying the experience of artificial yellow tetrachromacy and its unique color perception is a challenging task. While I can use a VR headset to simulate these impossible colors, the true analog experience of seeing them with my own eyes is vastly different and more complex than what you can observe through current VR technology and this video's visualizations. On top of that, my brain is uniquely predisposed to see impossible colors as unique colors because I've engaged myself in them for a long time. This difficulty is compounded by the limitations of RGB cameras, which capture colors in a way that's not fully representative of human vision, and then display them using predominantly only RGB light, further narrowing the range of perceivable colors. However, through the examples and visualizations provided, you should now have a clearer understanding of what tetrachromacy entails and the methods to artificially induce this expanded color vision. In an upcoming video, I plan to delve deeper into my experiences with the yellow tetrachromacy glasses, aiming to offer a closer look at how my perception of the world is altered through them. In the meantime, I encourage you to explore my other videos for more insights into similarly fascinating subjects, which are as intriguing and informative as this exploration into tetrachromacy. 
I am Ukwai, and I will show you how to reshape and enhance your sensory experiences because it is nothing but our senses that connect us to this world. Have fun watching and learning all these impossible colors. Thanks for watching.